What's going on folks, D Casanova back with another video and this is the final part of my uh, Spider-Man tutorial series. Whew. I know it's taken me a while to get to this part of the video and I apologize for that, but the people on my Instagram, they wanted me to do this video so I decided, you know what, screw it, I, I'm gonna do it, I need to get this done, and now I'm finally getting around to it. <sighs> and it took me several days to get through this. Jeez. But, anyway. So, what am I doing in this video? Well, I'm going to be going over the process of adding the web pattern, as well as the spider logos. Now, um... I do apologize in advance that uh, the uh, webbing pattern is mostly going to be uh, shown through progression shots, but hopefully you can get an idea. Uh, you don't have to do the web pattern or the spider symbols exactly how I did it. There are other ways you can go about doing it, but I will be showing you the uh, process of which I went through these things. Uh, and of course, you guys with your suits, you can do it however you want. So, um, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's rewind to when this thing was web and spiderless, and let's get into the materials you are going to need. So for this final step of bringing the whole costume together, you don't really need that much. Uh, obviously you're going to need your spidey suit, that's a given. Um, you're also going to want some uh, scrap red fabric as well as a uh, needle and uh, red thread. And if you don't want to use uh, red fabric, you could use uh, red foam, you could use uh, red puff paint. Uh, you may also want uh, some uh, spare craft foam if you have any left over or lying around. You could also use uh, Peltex and black fabric but I decided to use craft foam because that's what I have lying around. Uh, you're also going to want some uh, super glue. Um, I'm gonna be using a uh, Gorilla Glue. Um, you're also going to want some paper, a pencil, uh, some scissors, obviously. You may also want a ruler, a measuring tape, uh, some uh, Ultra fine point sharpies or markers. And also you're definitely gonna want a mannequin head and uh, some plastic bags, a pillow, or pretty much anything that will help you stuff the costume so that it'll be stretched out and you can properly uh, puff paint it, which I will be uh, using that as well. Now this is some Tulip Slick Black puff paint. Uh, you can use uh, puffy paint, you could use uh, matte fabric paint. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be black, it could be uh, silver, it could be white. Uh, the web can be pretty much any color that you want, just as long as it uh, sticks to the fabric. That's all that really matters. But uh, with that said, uh, why don't we get into this? Okay, so I'm gonna go right off the bat and say straight up, there are some points that are easier to do it when the suit is completely flat, and there are some steps that are way easier before you attach all the extra add-ons such as the soles and the spider logos, and there are some that are way easier when the costume is stuffed. So, as you can see here, I am making the center line down the chest, and basically what you want to do is you want to try to fold the chest part in half as even as you can, and then try to make a crease for your sharpie or pen or whatever to follow along and make sure that it's completely as straight as you can. Hopefully that makes sense. And it's basically the same general concept for the sleeves, and as for the back, well, if you did it the way that I did, there's gonna be a seam right there, so you don't have to mark that out at all! <laughs> anyway... So, once you've made your center seams, go ahead and stuff it with a pillow.
Once you've stuffed your costume with the pillow, go ahead and use a ruler to mark out the distance between each individual dragline webbing, and you can use the same general concept for making the sticky silks. Now, it's okay if it's not completely even or if it's not completely perfect, that's totally fine. I mean, this is a homemade costume. Who cares if it's perfect? You're making it yourself, which means it has more heart and soul in it. In fact, it's even better than the costumes that are made in the movies. Sorry, that may have been blaspheming, but still, a homemade costume has a lot of heart and soul in it, so cut yourself some slack, okay? When you're doing the web lines for the main torso, you can go about it a variety of different ways. You can do it in a uh, very Todd McFarlane way, like Tasm 2. You could do it the Sam Raimi way. You can do it the PS4 Spider-Man way. However you feel looks the coolest to you, go ahead and do it. I went for a very Raimi style because, well, for me it's very straightforward and very simple to duplicate. Uh, I will admit, I, <laughs> even though I've done this multiple times, I was kind of afraid of screwing it up on camera, but sometimes you just got to admit to yourself, DCAS, everybody screws up. That's all people ever do, so who cares if you do? Just go for it. So, yep. And, as you can see, I'm still using the ruler, and, uh, trust me, using a ruler really does help a lot. Now, you can go ahead and freehand it if you want, but I'm using a ruler because it makes it so much easier for me. So, that is basically the general idea.
And as you can see here, I have the shirt part of the main bodysuit all webbed out. And I'm just giving you a good look, or as good of a look as I have to offer, before I add the puff paint. And yes, I went all the way down the sleeve. So, yep. So now, let's bring in our black puff paint, or whatever color you're using. Now, I'm using black slick puff paint, and again, you can use uh, puffy, you can use matte, you can use metallics, and it doesn't even have to be black. It could also be silver, it could be white. Ah, oh, hell, it can even be gold. But you get the idea. It can be whatever style or whatever variety you want to use. Now, as you can see here, I'm starting from the uh, side seam where the zipper is, and I'm working my way over to the other side. And I'm going to stop this clip uh, halfway, but you get the idea. Whatever you do on one side, go ahead and do it for the other. And remember, for the Spider-Man costume design, the web pattern is on almost all the red parts. Now, I say almost because the back spider is red and there are no web patterns on that. Uh, speaking of which, stay tuned for when I go over my process on making the back spider as well as the chest spider as well. Alrighty, now you're going to see me measure out the space on the back part. I probably should have done that before I did all the webbing, but whatever. So now I'm folding a piece of paper in half, and for the back spider, I'm going to start by drawing kind of an oval shape, actually. And, uh, of course I have a ruler there because reasons. So, I draw out the oval shape, and then I cut off some of the excess on the side of the paper and I use that to draw out a spider leg and I'm just going to trace around that four times and that's going to make half the pattern and because the paper was folded in half well all you have to do is cut out the paper while it's folded in half and then when you unfold it you'll have the whole spider design Once I have the back spider template all cut out and done, I place it onto the red fabric, I trace around it, and you guessed it, I cut it out.
And as you can see in this clip, I restuffed the costume with the pillow, and then I'm going to pin the back spider onto the back, and I will hand sew it on. Now you can machine sew it on, like some others do, but I decided to hand sew it because, well, it's kind of satisfying for me. For making the chest spider template, it's basically the same idea. You fold a piece of paper in half and draw out half of your design. Now, reminder for those of you who are not too familiar with the Spider-Man costume pattern, for whatever reason, the chest spider and the back spider are always of different designs. Except for one instance with the MCU Spider-Man, but I don't like to talk about that. But. Yes, the back spider and the chest spider are typically of different designs. For the chest spider, I draw the main body of the spider, and I draw the spider lace coming out of the spider's head so that it's anatomically correct. And of course, I went with a more classic chest spider design because, well, it's what I know best. Now, unlike the back spider, I'm going to trace the chest spider onto a piece of black craft foam. And of course, you guessed it, once you trace it out, you cut it out and glue it onto the chest. And as you can see in this clip, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but you know what? Who cares? Again, this is a homemade costume, so let's all cut ourselves a bit of slack. Okay? Okay. Ooh, the back spider actually turned out really nice. I really like that. 
Okay, I think I got the general gist of the web pattern down with the shirt, so the rest of this video is mostly going to be a time lapse. But as you can see here with the boot, this is why you need the tape measure because the boot is not flat once you attach it to the rubber sole. So, yep, I'm using a measuring tape and a ruler for making the web pattern on the boots. But once you have all the measurements taken, it's basically the same general idea. A bunch of dragline webbings and some sticky silks every inch and a half or so. Again, you can do the web pattern however you want, and it doesn't even have to be the classic design like I'm doing. It could be like a spiraling sort of design that Spare Time Cosplay did. It could even be messy and all over the place, like the Edge of Time Spider-Man costume. In fact, I gotta say, the Edge of Time Spider-Man costume actually looks pretty badass, so I don't blame anybody for wanting to go about that design. But like I said, I'm going for a more classic approach because that's what I know best. For the gloves, you may want to put on the bodysuit so that you can make the web lines on the glove match up with the web lines on the sleeve. And as you'll see in a few moments, for the palm section, I went with my own improvised design. Uh, you can do whichever palm design you want. You can make it a complete duplicate of the outside. You can do one of the Sam Raimi palm designs. You could do pretty much any sort of design you want. You can pretty much have a field day with the palms because there are so many different options that you can go with. Now when you're puff painting the gloves, you're definitely going to want to stuff them. I'm going to use some plastic bags to stuff the fingers, and I'm going to use 
these canisters of racquetballs to stuff the gauntlet part. And if you're wondering why I have racquetballs when I am not athletic, it's because I use racquetballs for just plain old juggling. Yes, I actually do like to juggle. Oh, and I should probably also mention that puff paint normally takes about four hours to dry. However, if you set it next to a heater, it'll probably help if you have the heater on, or especially if you're doing it in uh, warm weather, or if it's cold outside and you have to turn the heater on anyway. Whatever the case, it might help dry the puff paint faster if you have it next to a heat source. Now, this final step is kind of like OCD for me, uh, but if you don't want to do this, that's totally fine, but once your gloves are all done and dry, I like to cut little holes in the wrist area because, well, for the typical Spider-Man that uses the mechanical web shooters, that's got to be where the nozzle for the web shooters pokes out, but for the Sam Raimi movies with the organic webs, there's still got to be a way for the webbing to get out. So, yeah, I just do it just for the sake of, you know, creating the illusion that Spider-Man can shoot webs. So, yeah. Let's take a look at the finished costume. And as you can see in this clip, the costume is all done. Shirt, pants, boots, gloves, and mask 
And, of course, we also have the armpit web leaks. And I think that's going to pretty much do it uh, for this video series. Not just this video, but the rest of them. Because, well, if you uh, followed along with me, your Spider-Man costume is uh, pretty much done. So, uh, yeah. Um, I hope that your costume turned out as great as mine, if not better. Or at least good enough to where you're pleased with it. If you followed along with me in this video, uh, go ahead and share a link to uh, pictures of your Spider-Man costumes if you followed along with my tutorials. Or if you have your own Spider-Man costumes that you have done, feel free to send a video link or uh, whatever else. Uh, if you followed along with me, I'd like to see what you have done. Also, if you enjoyed uh, these last several videos and have learned something from it, feel free to leave a like and uh, feel free to comment. And also consider subscribing as well. I don't upload a whole lot, but still, it's appreciated all the same. It won't cost you a thing, but like I said, I will appreciate it very much. Also, a huge thank you, not just to my subscribers, but to all of my friends, as well as all of my supporters who might not have accounts online but have been watching me all the same. Yes, I'm pretty sure some of you have been doing that as well. And all the same, I thank you so much and I appreciate each and every one of you. I know I might not say it enough, but I legitimately do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, but... Again, thank you so much for watching. I have been your host, D. Casanova, and until next time, I will see you on the web.